Good day everyone, my name is Leigh Bakiran and I am from Bachelor of Science in Nursing Third Year. So for today, I will have a brief discussion regarding non-obstructive sleep apnea. So first, let me define what this means. Obstructive sleep apnea is the most common sleep-related to breathing disorder which is characterized by an apnea episode which there will be a cessation of breathing for 10 seconds. After that, an individual will have, will have a decrease of airflow which is evidenced by breathing effort during sleeping because of the obstruction within the airway. So there are other types of sleep apnea but the most common type is obstructed sleep apnea which causes the upper airway to collapse during sleeping. So for the next part, I will be explaining to you the difference of normal breathing while sleeping to a person with obstructive sleep apnea. So for the obstructive sleep apnea, the mouth, tongue, and pharynx relaxes too much which causes the tongue to fall back at the soft palate at the back of the throat and will cause a block at the passage of airway. So as the passage is blocked or narrow, there will be an apnea episode or as I have said earlier, it is the cessation of breathing for 10 seconds. So the individual will have a lower oxygen saturation, shallow breathing, build up of carbon dioxide. So there are causes of obstructive sleep apnea and these are the followings. If the lower jaw is shorter, shorter to the upper, and the next one, if you have a large tongue, this could possibly fall back during sleeping and can cause for you to have an obstruction in the airway. So the next one, if you have a large neck or large collar size, which is 17 inches to 43 centimeters or more in men, and 16 inches to 41 centimeters or more in women, to be followed by obesity followed by large tonsils and adenoids that could possibly block the airway and the last one is if you sleep on your back this is also a cause to have an obstructive sleep apnea. So at this point the, dia the diaphragm and the chest muscle will work harder to open the blocked airway and to give an air to the lungs which will cause an individual to wake up with a loud gasp, snort or butt jerk. So after that, let's, let's proceed to the risk factors. These are the factors that the person will most likely will have an obstructive sleep apnea. So for the first one is excess weight. So if a person has an excess weight, he or she will deposit more fats that could possibly cause an obstruction within the airway to be followed by older age. As the age increases, the risk for obstructive sleep apnea also increases. The next one is hypertension to be followed by chronic nasal congestion, smoking and alcohol drinking, diabetes, sex. In men, two or three times as for menopausal women to have obstructive sleep apnea, while, on, while in women, it is after menopause, it increases for you to have obstructive sleep apnea. So for the next part is asthma and lastly allergies. So let's proceed with the signs and symptoms of an individual with obstructive sleep apnea. So for the first one is excessive daytime sleeping, will be followed by loud snoring. And the next one is episodes of stop breathing while sleeping, which is called the apnea episodes. Sudden waking up because of gasping or choking. Dry mouth and sore throat when waking up in the morning. Mood irritability, mood changes or the irritability will be followed by hypertension and the next is headaches in the morning, restlessness while sleeping, lack of concentration, low sex drive, being often in the middle of the night, and the last part is reducing of oxygen saturation. So as for the deep, Sleeping on your back is loudest, so it is better to sleep or turning to the other side when sleeping. This helps in reducing snoring. So let's proceed with the health management. So for the first one is weight loss. This is only necessary for people with obesity and also have obstructive sleep apnea. And the next one is avoid, obviously, avoid alcohol drinking and smoking and avoid taking sleeping pills because sleeping pills makes your sleep time more much longer and it causes for the mouth, tongue, and pharynx to relax for a longer time. And the next 
one is currently on one side when sleeping. This helps for the snoring to be lessened. And the next one is nasal spray. So for the next one is CPAP. So the CPAP means continuous positive airway pressure. This is a kind of machine where it will cover the nose to provide an air pressure while sleeping and it also keeps the back of the throat open to avoid having apnea episodes. The next one is overnight sleep test and the next one is mouth guard. Mouth guard also keeps the tongue from falling back at the back of the throat while sleeping and keeps the airway open during sleeping. So let's proceed with the diagnostic test. The diagnostic test for obstructive sleep apnea is what we call the body somnography. This is a conducted sleep study where an individual will be hooked up in equipment and monitor his or her heart, brain activity, breathing pattern, arm and leg movement, and blood oxygen. They might monitor you all night or half of the night or what we call the sleep night sleep study. This is where they will monitor you for the half of the night and if they won't discover you with obstructive sleep apnea, they will wake you up and give you a continuous positive airway pressure for the second half of the night. For the goal of treatment, it is to restore the ventilation or the breathing allowing the air to flow to lungs without too much resistance. So for the summarization, obstructive sleep apnea is the most common sleep related to breathing disorder which is characterized by an apnea episode or cessation of breathing for 10 seconds and it will let an individual to have a decrease of airflow as evidenced by breathing effort while sleeping because of the obstruction within the upper airway. So I hope you have learned something from me. That's all for today. Thank you and God bless. Have a good day and stay safe. <laughs>